So the enormity, the enormity of this. First, I would like to show you that uh, if you compare Mount Rushmore, for example, people are aware of Mount Rushmore. Anybody has any idea? So that was the tallest or the biggest real life depiction of a face. So when we build the statue, its face is even bigger than Mount Rushmore. So this is one more comparison if you are not aware of. So all those precedent faces are smaller than that. And look at this finger, it's 23, more than 20 feet tall. The total palm is almost six, 65 feet, so six and a half story. So that is the volume we are talking about. Here, it is 23 feet uh, big here. Your nose is 15 feet. So those are the scales, mind boggling. Even the toe is 10 feet. So uh, Statue of Liberty of 93 meters took them 14 years, uh, 12 years to build. Whereas the other Ushiku Daibatsu is in Japan, similar to our statue, it took them 10 years. And uh, the nearest rival is Spring Temple, which is in Bud uh, China, Pingding Shan. Uh, that took 11 years and height is 153 meters. Whereas statue of 182 meters, we took hardly 4 years, less than 4 years. And that too, I am not aware of the loss of life in all these statues because we don't have the data. But this statue was built without single loss of life. So it's uh, not only a matter for uh, Larson and Tubro too, which I represent, but it's a matter of pride for entire Indian fraternity. Like in construction, we have very poor records, but uh, this is one thing which we could achieve. And uh, when, when you go through the details, you will find out that it's just impossible that you have to work work in a vertical area. Say we have been doing a lot of projects where uh, I, I worked in Jamnagar refinery because when we started it, the famous international consultant said that it will take eight years, but we built it in five years. But there the volume was horizontally spread and uh, we had almost 65,000 people working. Whereas in this case, the scale is vertical. You can go only in one direction. So that was uh, another challenge. So uh, now uh, the biggest uh, challenge was in terms of brief. That uh, the brief was very simple. Client said, we want Sardar statue, 182 meter tall, and it should be in walking stance. Forget it. Then, and the other, the, the technical parameters were so tough that uh, to design it was quite a challenge. So it was just a vision of our Prime Minister that time, he was the Chief Minister of Gujarat, that we, we should have a statue of this height. 182 meters, by the way, is the number of constituencies in Gujarat. So uh, each one meter for each seat, you can say. And uh, my job was to convert that vision into final reality. So, when everybody, do, uh, we, we came across all these luminaries, the players and uh, musicians and all. No, they have their own art and they are performing. But whereas I have to perform for somebody else, somebody else's vision and convert that into reality. So you have to first imbibe that self. You have to understand what the client wants. So you have to walk into his shoes, think what he wants. And this is how the whole concept develops. But here you don't know what you are supposed to do. Like we, I have been in this field for the last 37 years. When you start a project, you exactly know what capacity of plant is to be built or uh, what are the structural design and all. Everything is available. But in this case, you say Sardar statue 182 meters. It should withstand 180 kilometer wind speed. It should be designed for zone four seismic forces. Now, those are very challenging standards. Actually, uh, those who are sitting engineers would be knowing that geographically this area falls in zone 3, where the wind velocity and the seismic requirements are not that. Like 130 km wind speed is good enough, but this is designed for taking future into account because of climate change, something may happen. So, this is withstand, this can withstand 180 km wind speed. 
and seismic zone 4 like uh, even the Sardar Sarovar dam that is zone 3 but this is zone 4 so one zone higher so that way this is even stronger the design wise so that was the biggest challenge and the biggest issue was this unknown that what the appearance should be and those type of decisions you know nobody will decide the files will move around people will not say and we have very short time so we one side we have to start the activity and another side we do not know what to do like you don't know which side the statue should be facing we, uh, the contractor was supposed to give the options that in which direction it has to face. So we finally had three, four options. We did the solar studies and shadow analysis and all. And we find out that when maximum illumination uh, tourists can get. So accordingly, uh, the data was collected and we went to uh, have a meeting with the highest office. And we presented this. Do you see the small four statues in the right corner? So those are the replicas which were shown to Egypt. So this is how it will be changing color. So all these decisions, they were taken at that office. So now you have the fundamentals known that you have to have a statue facing this direction. We lost almost six months in this. And... Uh, from a construction point of view, you know, the clock is ticking. So what we started, we started building the uh, uh, excavation work and all those things. The foundation work we started at Sadhu Hill. Now, Sadhu Hill is a location in the river. It is such an isolated place. Like first time when I went there, it took me one and a half hours trekking in the riverbed and reached there. And you have all sorts of animals around and... The, uh, it, it was a real jungle safari sort of thing. Yeah, you go, go there, crocodile would be there and all. So we, we were dealing with a very difficult situation and we started with the foundation work. So excavation started. What I am trying to uh, tell you is that a lot of things are ha happening in a parallel. And those, all those stakeholders are sitting in a different location. And when you are operating from such a location, like even making a phone call was a challenge. You have to travel some 6-8 kilometers to have an even decent discussion. Like you come across some issue, then again you have to refer to the designers. So that was a real uh, issue for that. And another side, the if it was simple engineering project, you just uh, uh, have the technical uh, parameters with you and you can deal with it. But this was a real life depiction, no? like a natural depiction of a person. So what should be the shape? What should be the feature? Then it start, that process we started. So what we did, we first had a three feet model. Then we had 18 feet model. And then we built a 30 feet model. But in this process, what happened? When we started with 18 feet, we, when we were showing it around, we started receiving a lot of nasty comments like, Oh, Sardar ko koi maar ke khada kar diya and all those things. The Sardar ma tej na thi, am Gujarati newspaper started. Times of India gave a big story, the chahera par noor nahi hai and all those things. So that was a challenge which no engineering book teaches you to solve. Correct. And that, that typical difficult job, that's why I know how to deal with artists. I, I've been dealing with the sculptor there, 92-year-old Mr. Ram Suthar, Padma Shri Padma Bhushan, amazing artist. So, and telling an artist that what you are doing is not right, say it is the toughest job. A 92-year-old guy, you tell him what you have done is not good. And when you show him this newspaper, he will use the language which I cannot tell you <laughs> <laughs> so, um, dono sides of us, like, you don't know how to do it. So then I said one thing, we can approach people and their government helped me. That we said that we have public consultation. So we conducted a lot of, we like literally people used to say, Tum ko putla leke abhi so we went with the statue to Karamsad, we went to places, we issued forms. 
how do you see the nose what is this what are your comments on this all those around eight uh, around 2000 comments we collected and there were some very sharp critics like especially the non resident gujaratis so they will come out with uh, even uh, cat drawings or something and some scan data and all say no no this statue should be like this the uh, right eye is bigger than left eye and all those things now this was a challenge which we 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 have no solution sorry I'm, my mouth is running right so then we found a technological solution i said there is a technology now like forensic uh, we use you know the 2d to 3d conversion <coughs> So what we did, we got from Delhi archive some 3000 photographs and we made people sit in one room. I said, you make a model. Say, so when you want, you want Amitabh Bachchan statue, for example, you want Chinikam Amitabh Bachchan or you want Divar Amitabh Bachchan or which movie Amitabh Bachchan, correct? Shole ka Deva Amitabh Bachchan chahiye. Oh, batao, we will make it like that. Because being a contractor, we had no say and for us it didn't matter like the facial expression and all but our idea was to give the best product so that ev everyone is happy and satisfied. So then we started this process of evolution. We made a 30 feet bronze statue which is in Gandhinagar now and that was treated as a replica. And then you uh, uh, scan it, uh, we scanned it up to uh, neck level and started enlarging it to into full scale. Now when you do the full the enlargement, again you lose certain details. So again you have to take this uh, artist to the mold and uh, I would give you an example like it is very difficult for us to at least I was not able to visualize like uh, you want to show a mosquito bite on his face correct or a mole. Now that is hardly 2 mm, but here it will be like 2 feet. So that scale now, how can you visualize if that casting is made and put here, you cannot say how it will look at 600 feet high from this distance. That visualization only artists can do. And we use this technology extensively there, virtual reality. So we recreated this entire thing and using those lens and all, we can see that. So now you see this is the enlargement done. So face was one thing which would be most uh, prominent because there, there the maximum comments came to face. And another uh, interesting part on this was that this being a monochrome material like bronze has only one color. So how to show skin, how to show uh, cotton khadi, how to show woolen. So we did it through using texture, different textures we formulated. So that that gives a material a characteristic like our neuroscientists say, you know, then when you see the different texture and color, your mind can immediately understand that this is cotton. This is, if, if you visit statue, you will realize that detailing what is done. So all those things were incorporated in that. And then we started casting. Now, so uh, when the work is going on in uh, foundry, parallelly things are going on at site. And the, uh, this is the concrete structure we have to build. Like un when we started constructing, the first challenge came was that uh, when you do the wind tunnel study, the stresses were so like in, incidentally in Sardar's case, what happened? If it was Statue of Liberty or something, like you have a big gown. If it was a South Indian statue, I would have been happier, no? Because lungis will be there, big base would be there. Stresses will be distributed easily. In this case, this gentleman being a farmer, he was wearing his dhoti up. So you have to show both the ankles. And when you have to show two ankles at this 180 kilometer wind speed and those seismic parameters, the first cut design came was like that of an elephant. The legs came out like that. Then again you go back to the sculptor, sculptor said nothing doing, ye kya bana ke layo. So that was rejected. Then again it goes back to concrete technologies, the structural designer and then they come out with a 
ellipse, ellipse shape. So you could reduce it and elongate. So uh, on a foot, you can just place that ellipse uh, because the lifts have to travel in that. So that, that was the biggest challenge and we, we have to do everything in a mock-up. So when we cast, uh, like see these two legs are there. Now when we cast the first lift, like three meters, we cast and see how it comes out. Because the reinforcement steel was so much that if you put a torchlight, it won't pass through. Such a density, 560 kg. The engineers, any civil engineers is there? They will understand that what is 560 kg per cubic meter uh, reinforcement. And then you have to put a lot of insert plates and also nothing will move. So when we pour the first concrete and open the shutter, you must have heard of honeycomb, honeycomb in concrete with holes and all. But this was environmental friendly concrete. Even pigeons can sit inside. Such, such were the holes. So again you go back to the concrete design and finally we worked out M65 grade, 10 millimeter down, uh, self-compacting. So you don't need to put even vibrator. When you pour a lemon, will think you are putting water in this. But that worked and finally the whole core were using, uh, built using that. So these were the construction challenge and when you go up, because of multi-level, you, 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 the structural steel work is also going on. In the bottom, a lot of finishing activities are going on. And if a single nut falls from that height, it has capacity to kill somebody. And the biggest constraint was the once in the top view, you saw that the area is very small. Now, another feat which we have achieved here is that Generally, all these statues are built using a scaffolding around. You must have seen when building is constructed, you put a scaffolding. Correct. This was not built with scaffolding. It was built from inside. Like you lift the uh, panel with the crane and put it there. Because there is no space around. So you are in the river. So you cannot put scaffolding. So all activities have to go in one direction. You cannot have parallel activities uh, without risking anything. So that, when the, this crane is utilized by one activity, the other guy cannot work because we had a computerized system which takes care of that. If the fouling is happening, because one crane and another crane when travels, those are very complex issues. And this is only I'm talking about heavy erection and all. You have a lot of uh, electromechanical things like lifts, cranes, and you have uh, Walkalators, escalators, there is a very good museum below. So all those activities. And uh, like any project, you know, this, some, some agency would take more time generally taking those approval and all. Now imagine, gen by any normal standard, this would have taken 8 to 10 years, suppose. If even uh, if we did not have those proactiveness. So that is one thing that we, all the stakeholders, worked in a very proactive manner. Once the consensus is there, and being an EPC contractor, and a company like Larson and Tubro has a very strong technological backup. Like we have a lot of our specialist consultants with us and all. So we were sure what we are going to do will be ultimately approved only. Because in the general session in the government, you must have come across that nobody would be happy to put his pen on the paper. He will say, approval ni bara bara, tum log kaam chalu kar do. So this is how. And otherwise we would have just reached up to ankle level or something. So this was another risk which, which I took. Sometimes even management of a company will not support you because there are a lot of financial risk. Like imagine something goes wrong or somebody goes, uh, says that this is not okay and then you have to again reverse the entire thing. Like this bronze, those are the pieces lying there bronze. All this bronze, all this casting, we all started in advance. But we know what we are doing and all those quality control and all. And it was proved that we, what we are going to do is right. Because we had this, uh, this is our 3D studio where you can 
So we used to get approvals through all type of these mechanisms. We, we went to the Prime Minister, we had made a full presentation, all including the stonework finishing, everything was shown. So whenever any uh, adverse comments are there, you can immediately incorporate and get it corrected. And those technical issues were sorted out. And uh, we used even uh, our own apps we had developed. Like, uh, suppose uh, you, uh, you scan one of these plates, because this statue is made up of almost, say, 7,000 pieces. Imagine it's a jigsaw puzzle of 3D. 3D pieces are there, 7,000 pieces. So, you cannot just say, oh, either one I got bring that another piece. It's, each one is weighing around 200 kg. So it was not a child's play. Everything has to go into sequence and each was having an RFID. And when you uh, point your mo mobile scanner on that, you will exactly get what material it is, when it was cast and where exactly it sits. So accordingly, you combine those pieces and we joined it and erected. So that's, that, that's the extensive use of technology. And such a large project where you have multiple stakeholders cannot happen without teamwork. All the, like in, uh, from client side, from consultant side, from our own, uh, uh, those uh, specialist uh, consultants, like for studying the wind uh, forces and all, and for uh, uh, other water hydrological studies we had to do, all those things we did it through specialist technology. And this is our team which achieved this. So this is Statue of Unity. It's a matter of pride not only for Gujarat, it's a matter of pride for entire country because the whole world was watching and many of the foreigners, had to, if the renowned consultants had said that this statue cannot be done before 2022. But we did it. Thank you. I think I met your time requirement also like the project. <laughs>